we are starting with an amazing talk from Divya Goswami. Uh, she'll be teaching us more about our beloved Python programming language and its interpreter. Now, I won't take much of your time uh, handing over the stage to Divya. And happy learning, April. Uh, Divya, good luck for your talk. OK, thank you. Um, good afternoon, everyone from India. This is Divya Goswami presenting on who begat Python. So today, I'm going to talk about how Python was originally built, how it came into existence, or exactly in my words as who begat Python. Uh, I will also share how Python interpreter acts or how it runs behind the scenes. You don't really see how it, uh, you just know that how it uh, runs your code, but uh, we'll see something under the hood. Uh, so also steps of how Python takes your code from parsing to running. And for people who wants to follow along with me, it's at this, the bit.ly link, and here's the QR code for you if you want to follow along you can uh, scan the code or go to this link you can get the access to this slide so moving on before i come start the topic a little about me i'm a senior computer student from kolkata and uh, i've worked with open mainframe project and ibm z this time as a summer mentee at lfx also i am an z ambassador for this year uh, at IBM Z, and I'm currently working as a DevSecOps intern at Trell. Uh, you can go through these links to see what I do on Twitter, or GitHub, a little about me. My portfolio link is right there, and a few of my blogs are also posted on that uh, link as well. So um, moving on. So before I start again, uh, a little flashback on how I came to this topic, how uh, I thought about this topic. Uh, so the story of CPython begins for me while I was working as an intern some months back in a uh, company. And I had the job to build a crawler in C++. And crawler in C++ means a bit difficult for me. And back then, I started learning a Python. And I knew that I am very much confident in Python than building a C++ crawler. So I discovered something called you can embed C++ inside Python. You can uh, literally use some extensions, and you can run the code on Python. So um, the pros will be that I will be learning a new language. And uh, uh, but uh, what happened is like I became confused with uh, terms. Like I got Python, and then C Python. Uh, then Python and PyPy, and these were all so misty back then that I. Um, actually took the challenge of uh, learning any one of these and actually uh, understanding that what, how are they different from each other. Uh, but uh, of course, about the story of the crawler, I did uh, go back to CPP, uh, C++ and made it. But uh, this is the first error I got while using Cython back then. And I thought, this is something interesting. I should uh, explore it. Uh, so I saved the error inside a file and I kept it for later. And resultant is PyCon India 2021. And this is the presentation I came up with. So that's the world. Um, that's how I started thinking about C Python. So a little before, again, uh, inside going inside that, the mist about I was talking about. So Cython, or what I was actually trying to write the crawler in, is a compiled programming language. It's totally different from uh, what I am going to talk about today, that is C Python. Uh, it, Cython is actually, it gives the power of C inside Python. So it's basically Python with C data types. Um, again, what one more is PyPy is uh, implementing the Python interpreter in Python. That is using the just-in-time compiler, which uh, essentially means that it compiles your code, your Python code, during execution rather than the normal traditional way of a compiler that compiles before execution. Uh, another term that I was talking about is Jython. It also is another implementation of Python, but on uh, the Java virtual machine. That is totally different. Now we come to C Python, which has a totally different meaning from all this. C Python was how Python interpreter was first built. The creator himself and a few people back then, they tried to create this language, this um, interpreter in C. And 
uh, that's how Python came into existence. So C Python is actually a binary that is compiled a uh, version of many C files. I'll be showing you what C files exactly in a while. And that's the compiled version of so, so many C files into uh, one single binary. And that is actually what resides in your bin directory. Uh, I'm a bit uh, uh, not acquainted much with the Windows one, but in Linux, you have the uh, bin directory where uh, Python exists. So that's where Python resides. And that's actually what C Python is. And that's what we are going to talk about. So before um, starting, so why Python? Uh, this is from uh, Guido Van Rossum, the creator of Python. Remember that name. It's from the original tutorial he wrote himself, chapter one, Betting Your Appetite. Uh, that's where this is written. Python's elegant syntax and dynamic typing. Many of us have already started using it together with this interpreted nature. Um, from here, we can understand that uh, Python is uh, has a nature of interpreter. Uh, what is it we'll uh, go after some time? We'll, we'll jump into that. Uh, it also it's an ideal language for scripting and rapid application development in many areas on most platforms. Even as an intern, uh, I am extensively using Python for automating and writing small scripts that uh, it, it's it's actually widely used in my daily workflows. So that's why um, we, most of us, use Python. So, um, so as a starter, for the curious ones, I have prepared some trivia. Uh, you can discuss it in the comments, uh, maybe debate it and uh, get some uh, useful answers in the end. Uh, we can discuss the answers in the end of the of my talk. But this is trivia one that says that uh, my balance is ten thousand. Guitar costs ten thousand, and also food is hundred. If guitar is balance, uh, obviously people will say you cannot afford it. You need the food, right? But uh, what Python does is it says let's rock it. Forget the food. We can get the guitar. Is uh, what exactly is happening here? We'll be discussing it. Uh, for the people who are curious, you can, uh, you know, you can uh, start it in the comments right now. Another trivia I'm giving you right now is a tuple which has a nested lists inside and an element. I have tried modifying one of the elements inside the tuple, inserting it. You can see I am trying to add or append it, and uh, it does show the error that tuple does not. Uh, you know, uh, uh, this is not fit for mutation. But uh, when you print it, it actually does. Uh, it actually mutates the inside list. So uh, what exactly is happening here? Maybe you, this is another trivia you can uh, repeat in the comments, and we'll come to it at the end. So um, let's start from the beginning. Now you know that Python that you run on your system comes from a source code. And this is the source code. You can get it from this GitHub link. It's an active development. Anyone can go and contribute to it. Uh, while every directory here has its own purpose for my talk and for my um, uh, just for making this talk easier and uh, to understand, I will stick to the ones that are really useful for today's presentation. So the grammar directory. It contains the computer readable language definition. Uh, the include directory uh, contains all the necessary header C files. Object uh, right here has a definition about the various objects you use, like lists, tuples, and uh, dictionaries. Uh, and uh, the Python, finally, is the main source code of C Python or the Python interpreter written in C. So everything here uh, actually condenses and comes to this place and then um, Actually, the binary gets formed right here in that directory. So all of these C files together with the headers getting compiled into a binary. And uh, that's how Python is begat. So who begets Python? C. But um, I'm not done yet. I have already question, answered my question. But there is a lot to do. There's a, I have been given a time, and I will explain how exactly. So. So the first, uh, and in a bit hint to our previous uh, question, previous trivia, uh, this is an example I wrote. Uh, this is the definition for 
of a function. Uh, it simply it just uh, concatenates and prints C Python in Python India. But uh, what exactly happens inside is uh, in one of the steps, uh, what Python does is it parses the code and it produces some uh, weird thing like this that is uh, you'll come to know it's a tree what exactly the name is i'll be revealing it to you in uh, after some slides so this is what is one of the steps that happens uh, inside python before it gets executed uh, you can see that it's recognizing it as a module module has some body body as uh, recognizes some expression and each of it has uh, the string with the uh, the, the, another string and uh, sort of it loads in. but let's not really uh, bust our brains right now we'll go slowly to so before this step comes out so we'll be talking a bit about how exactly it reaches this step so the roadmap so python takes our code through the following steps lexing the initial step parsing then generating an ast that's exactly what the previous tree was the abstract syntax tree and then compiling or making the creating the bytecode we'll be coming to it again and then finally running the bytecode that is final step of execution so we'll go one by one <coughs> to each first is lexi now uh, again do not bother reading this uh, this is one of the python's frequent reads it is what is called the grammar it is again found in this grammar directory inside uh, the c python source tree it has all the necessary recognition words for python to identify the syntaxes and tokens keywords what exactly what exactly is which word what do you mean um, so this is the first step where Python is actually distinguishing and finds out the purpose of each word that you typed in in your code. So it doesn't really understand what each means, each keyword means that this is where it references. So this is the lexing step. Now we come to the parsing step. So what is parsing? I have used a module named uh, tokenize where uh, it, uh, Python essentially gives you the uh, uh, gives you the information about how it referenced the grammar and took out what is exactly what here. Uh, as you can see, UTF, uh, the encoding of this Python uh, uh, code I have written is in UTF-8. Again, uh, a small fun fact is once upon a time, you quite, you could have written Python in Lot 13 also. Uh, right now, it's not supported. It's uh, removed from Python 3. Uh, so th this is how Python writes or identifies, which is what uh, it, as you can see, the definition, it knows that it's a name and this foo is a name. Uh, the brackets are operations. This is a new line. The indentation as the tab is recognized as an indentation. You can essentially see that it is recognizing the string or the name or the variable name. So this is the second step where Python is actually tokenizing or uh, you know, uh, uh, in our words, mark marking every single uh, words in our code, what exactly is each of them. So now the uh, so second step, the pars parsing is done. Now the code is fully readable and marked by Python to go forward uh, with dealing with what is the purpose of the code. We haven't yet gone into what the code actually wants Python to do. So the question now is which object does what and it which order? So before that, we come before we come to the AST or the third step, I'm going to talk about a bit on what a tree looks like and with nodes. This is an example expression I have written that uh, if you feed inside Python, what it exactly does is it makes a tree out of itself. So as you can see, this gets recognized as an expression. The expression breaks itself with the plus sign. We all know that terms are divided with plus and minuses. So the term gets divided, and then it recognizes the factors in between the multiplication. And that's how this whole expression gets inside a tree. So here, the expression is the root node, and then it has a lot of child nodes or the children nodes so yeah th that that's how exactly tree uh, with nodes look like so python does exactly that um so what it does is uh, um, it makes it exactly follows the same order and it makes something called the abstract syntax tree now abstract syntax tree as the name says it 
does something with the syntax. Now, uh, it makes it itself into an object tree, object tree as in it recognized all the objects in the tokenized uh, step, and it slowly uh, makes an order about which object should be doing what and exactly which order. So I have used the AST module that is readily built in inside Python. You can use this as well. And it parses the whole foo definition, function definition. And right now, it is not really in human readable format. As you can see, the tree is actually giving you some weird addresses. You can travel down the tree node by node as a I have used a zero or the root node, you can uh, go forth and uh, you can do this. But in for human readable format, you also have AST dump that actually dumps the whole AST. And uh, that again will not be that much human readable. So I have used pretty print module to actually show it and uh, line by line what exactly it looks like. So this is third step where the AST is getting generated. And this is exactly the tree that you saw some slides back. So that was the abstract syntax tree. It uh, arranges an object tree on the basis of a syntax, on the basis of syntax analysis. And uh, after this is actually what uh, Python goes and tries to run the code or actually starts generating the bytecode. So the tree is done. And now we go to the bytecode. So making code objects or creating the bytecode. So there is a code, Dunder code, uh, again, a readily available attribute. And what exactly it does is it prints the byte, uh, it prints the code object. So code object in general sense, an object is a sequence of statements uh, or instructions in a compiler language or usually a machine language. So what right now Python has done is it created the AST and it produced the compiler or the machine code or the low level code now which is ready to be run okay so this is just the pre stage the uh, just the stage before python is about to run so um uh, as you can see again i have used the code attribute to actually look uh, look at the raw form of uh, foo as a code object you can also use several attributes inside it that is co cons as the name suggests it gives you the constant values of inside the, it actually prints the literals inside uh, the function definition you can see c python and in python india also with that you have another uh, there are several of them which i'll show you in some time there are again mm -hmm. one more example i have tried showing you is co one names that actually prints all the variables that is used inside or locally inside the function definition and finally we come to the co code which is actually printing the unreadable ASCII value of the code. Uh, that, so that's exactly how it gets uh, uh, bro broken down in from the AST to the code. So uh, now each of these uh, will be uh, converted into a byte code or which will be interpreted as code in bytes. There will be a small chunks of instructions, each for each bytecode having one instructions, and that will be loaded on something will be coming on afterwards, and that will finally run the code. So now you can see that Python has reduced the whole big function, that whole big def foo inside into this, um, you know, this uh, small bytecodes. Now next, what should be done? It will be run. So before running, now, as we have seen the co-code here, we can now understand that what exactly is inside co-code. So co-code, um, I have used another uh, um, uh, module here that gives you the op name attribute, which uh, essentially shows you the value of each code, what exact operation is carried on in each byte code, which instruction is happening. So for example, in the root code, in the root node, the first one is the load const, and that's the op name. And op name is actually the operation that will be carried mm -hmm. out. But a byte code is actually containing two bytes in size, the op code and the op argument. So and we'll be seeing what the op argument is in each line. Uh, if you have uh, remembered what exactly was the function definition, uh, I mean, the function I have written, it's actually storing uh, the, uh, uh, the, it's actually getting the string C, 
C Python inside a variable name. So uh, if you can guess it, uh, it will be something of C Python getting loaded inside uh, the stack. Now, think talking about the stack. This is the next step where Python is actually taking each of these instructions and loading it on something called the stack. What is the stack? Before that, um, uh, so each of these, if you want to go to uh, understand which what what each of these opcodes actually does, there is a file. There is a file inside the Python source tree as called the C eval C. Uh, that uh, is actually uh, having your uh, a big uh, switch statement where uh, if you can go and search for load const, it will give you some uh, definition declaration and it will show you what exactly the opcode does with the op argument. Suppose, for example, I have showed you load fast here. Load fast is another case uh, inside the switch case, and this is what it does. Um, if you are interested, you can check out this inside the Python source tree in the ceval.c. Now, before, so we were talking about a stack. Now, what is stack? Before coming into what exactly how it runs the code, stack is a data structure. Uh, the, for the CS ones, uh, we have been taught this in our classes. Stack is actually a data structure where it's uh, uh, it, it has two operations, that is push and pop. It has a pointer on top of it, top which uh, hints to or which points to the actual uh, operation that is going on right now. So what it does is uh, if, if it wants to carry out some operation, it pushes it inside the stack. And once it's done, it gets popped out. Something like this exactly is carried on inside Python. So Python here is here so this is again i have used the this module inside that the this attribute and that faded in the function definition and this is what how the uh, each of the opcodes are stored on the stack and it runs each of it so uh, for the uh, ones who have understood what the stack is, you can understand that uh, the first is it's loading the C Python string, as I've said before, and it's stored it inside the pi variable. And then the next step in the stack is it loaded the pi variable and it loaded the constant in PyCon India. And uh, if you remember, the last step was to concatenate both the strings. So it Binary added since this, uh, these two are strings, so it got concatenated and it finally returned the value. So that's uh, very simple. What how the Python has uh, uh, run the code using the Python stack based VM. This is the final step in the running or execution of Python. But again, if it's very difficult. Uh, to understand and there is a module that's called InstaViz. You can import it readily. Again, uh, I, I think uh, you have to uh, you have to uh, get it installed using pip. I have, I think, used pip to install it. But uh, once you have installed it, you can use it on the interpreter mode and in the interactive mode. And uh, you can uh, readily just show uh, foo and it opens a web server. And what exactly it shows is the definition. And we come to the AST. So for the people who were very uh, confused with the uh, addresses and that structure, the small structure, this is how InstaViz makes you see it. So I have uh, essentially showed you the function definition part where because it's it has most of the information. And this is exactly where I have shown you the tree getting uh, broken uh, broken up. So uh, you can see the food, the name, and key keyword name where there was none, nothing of it. And then it showed the Python variable, uh, what, what it had, the value inside it, the C Python. At, this, this this is one of the examples of one root node uh, and showing its AS tree or the abstract syntax tree. Again, you can also see the code object, which I've shown you some time back. So there are so many attributes, as I've told you before. Um, I have uh, essentially showed you the code code. Here, it's showing you the as the bytecode string. Uh, the constants also is visible here. As I've done it in the interactive mode there is no file name the first line number is obviously one 
if you follow this, uh, you can see there are again uh, there are another called the n locals that shows you the local variables inside the function definition. The stack size, essentially, if you remember, it was two, and the var names that was used inside was pi. So what InstaWiz does is it actually shows you all the whole uh, uh, the breakdown of code inside, and you really don't have to go through all the uh, uh, you know the uh, uh, modules and uh, do it slowly but uh, at this, as you can see again there is a disassembled code where it shows you the stack how exactly is it uh, getting carried uh, if even if it, there is a jump target that's 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 how it shows there and this is uh, what instaviz does so you can check this out also for if you want so in conclusion Python takes our code through the following steps. Again, revising, lexing, that was the first step of differencing from its dictionary. Parsing, where it tokenized every single uh, keywords, what exactly is what, and then it generates the AST, as in what, how, or which order will it follow the code or execute the code, and then it uh, compiled into a uh, uh, chunks of code based on operations, instructions, and then finally it run the code on Python stack VM. So that's how you, uh, the, that's how Python does these steps. Now for the trivia, we have finally come to the end, almost the end. So the trivia here uh, so there is a, a the way of identifying what exactly. So what is is here is doing is is identifies if the same object is getting referenced or not. So this is a game of referencing in Python where if guitar and balance is not exactly uh, referencing the same object, it's not actually referencing to the value, but the object. And each object has a different ID. As you can see, guitar has a different ID. Balance also has a different ID. So it rendered it false. And that's why it printed Let's Rock It. Again, for Trivia 2 solution, this is, again, a game of referencing in Python. As you can understand, tuple inside had a reference to a mutable object that was a list. And when it tried to access it, it had no problem accessing it because it was a list. But after when it used the plus the sign, that means it was appending. Uh, it did understand that it was trying to mod, uh, mutate the tuple. But by then, the list that was referenced inside was already mutated. So that's why you got the mutated string or actually the tuple. So. Now we, as we come to the end of the slides, uh, thank you for uh, hearing this uh, talk. And, and for the people who are actually interested in uh, going more deep inside this, uh, just if you don't remember these links, just remember 10,000 meters. They, they uh, He actually does a lot of uh, these things. I also, this is something you will get readily if you just search for it inside the Python virtual machine. It uh, actually shows you every single step even more deeper than I actually showed you here with uh, writing small functions and uh, actually visualizing each of the steps, even the stack VM, because it's a huge topic in each. Also, if anyone is wanting to contribute or go for more deeper understanding of the source tree, Larry Hastings has made another uh, video or uh, talk, Stepping Through CPython. You can uh, search this also. So thank you so much for uh, coming to this talk. If you have any questions, this is the time you throw it to me. Thank you. Uh, I think Nikhil, are you audible? In oh, sorry. chat. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, I'll mute it. So uh, we have one question. Thank you for that very insightful talk. Uh, in chats, tuples are mutables uh, mentioned as hashables uh, than immutables. So what does hashables mean? Uh, hashables uh, in chats as in, OK, OK, so uh, okay, I have to check the chats. Chats. 
Hashable, exactly. Uh, it's not really. I have uh, haven't uh, been acquainted to that topic, so might be it might be a chance for me to learn as well. Uh, so I'll definitely go through this chat. I don't think so. I'll be able to find it at the moment. Um, right. Yeah. Uh, we have another question. Like, if B is two fifty six and A is two fifty six, A is B returns true. Can you explain why? Uh, this was actually happened uh, not exactly right now. Uh, it was true for some uh, one of the versions right now. It, it, I, I don't think so. It really right now it proves it as true. But it's again for the reference part that uh, it's actually referencing to the same object uh, it gets stored. But uh, in the later steps, it's actually getting replaced. So the object reference changes for the second time if you write it down. Uh, it doesn't actually 